Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Orbital Shipyard. We're here in game number three of the last best of five of the evening. And on the line is a ticket to the Intel Extreme Masters for the WCS Winter Circuit Championship. Spawning in at the bottom is the Green Zerg representing my insanity, bringing the series back to level pegging. It's Serral. His opponent spawning is the Purple Protoss in the top position, playing for Planet Key Dynamics. We have Kung Fu Panda. So we had an incredibly tense game one over half an hour. Very defensive, very cagey. A much more aggressive game two, but admittedly that was helped by having three gold bases taken in total during the game. That lasted much, much less long. And now we have game three on Orbital Shipyard. And again, we take the forward base um, for Serral here. Not looking to take that pocket base here because he needs to try and spread his creep nice and early. Uh, no golds to speak of this time. The only golds on this map are in the middle. And of course, they are extremely high risk, arguably not as high reward. But, you know, if you get to a split map situation, then fair enough. In the meantime, Nexus, Gateway, Gateway. All good in the hood as far as Protosses are concerned. It looks like no one's going to see each other here. That's fine. And on this particular map, I mean, we could, for example, see Proxied Stargates over here. That tends to be reasonably popular with Protosses. There are all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, that we can be going for. The middle of the map is really, really open and really, really exposed, which is great uh, for Zergs, for example, but really the damage is done close to the bases. Like, having as much control over this is fine, but you still need to be able to push into the base itself, and of course that's where uh, Protosses can engineer those choke points with stuff like force fields, time warps, positioning of units, blink with the stalkers, and really mess around open armies that much more. Overlord will spot double gateway with Chrono Boost, and they are for adepts. So uh, these Zerglings are an endangered species if they chase that probe around too much longer. Are we going to be going straight for a robotics facility after the first two gateways here? So well worth noting. Here come the first two adepts, opting not to rush out, just being nice and chill, uh, performing a defensive duty on top of the fat ramp, protecting the third. So that tells me that Kung Fu Banda is likely to be grabbing his third base very, very soon indeed. There's the Mothership Core as well to assist with those kind of shenanigans. And we already have connected creep between the main and, even though we took this first, we'll call that the third base. Pocket Natural's been taken now as well. And we're now starting to think about spreading creep out. Now, I've noticed with Serral, his creep spread is almost always exceptional. Uh, unless he starts, getting, uh, he starts getting really, really badly harassed. And then sort of creep spread stops and he kind of forgets about it for a little while. Which ends up being a little worrying. These queens are uh, buying time for these creep units to spawn will be able to do that. It looks like these Zerglings are going to be able to follow the shades all the way home. I don't think they're going to be uh, popping. And this allows Serral to get just a little bit more creep tumor up as well. So nice and chill. And looks like we have a very quick robotics bay coming out from Kung Fu Banda. Looking forward to seeing what that brings. Robotics facility still not yet seen by this Overlord. Now it will be, but I think the... Uh, Photon Overcharge comfortably takes it out before it sees anything else. The Robotics Bay is still a secret. There's one more Overlord here that can potentially move in and check that out. Oh, never mind. It, I did actually check that out and leave, so uh, fair enough. Is that a massive battle cruiser that they're building there? Oh, okay, no, that's the battle cruiser there. Oh, can you imagine if this entire thing was one huge battle cruiser? That would be sick. So sick. And we have Warp Prism Speed and Disruptors coming out from Kung Fu Banda. So his third base is coming down now as well. The creep spread is starting to go in all directions for Serral now. So uh, not just going for the single path. We're breaking down the rocks here. So potentially grabbing this base as a fourth too. 
and we have a double Stargate from Kung Fu Panda right next to the third base location as well. So we have Disruptors on the ground, maybe going for a similar composition uh, that we saw previously. Phoenix is in the air, maybe? That's worked out reasonably well. We shall see. Double Disruptor drop coming in right now. And uh, what units does Serral have in place to spot this? Not an awful lot so far. Zerglings? Zergling? Oh no, not quite. Ooh! Oh, that was uh, that got cancelled. A little bit of positioning there. And it looks like, there we go, those are the disruptor shots. They do not end up doing much damage at all. Really good reactions coming out of there from Serral. Oh, he, tip he picked it up in the War Prism just before it exploded. Otherwise, he could have killed all of those uh, Zerglings as well. Little bit careless, but never mind. It was, uh, it was something where Split Second would have made all of the difference. In the meantime, we have the debris being taken out here from Goku Banda as well. So he is going to be eyeing this up at his fourth. The Disruptor is still not quite able to do what he needs them to do, and as a result, the Muters are going to send him packing and possibly send him plummeting to the ground at this point. The War Prism cannot get away, I don't think. Oh god, this is so painful, but you can't just drop the Disruptors or they die. Yep, looks like everything dies, unfortunately. There goes the War Prism and the Disruptors, and that is definitely first blood to Serral. That is a huge, major victory in this game number three. Double Phoenix production coming out now from Kung Fu Banda, so that's going to be able eventually to deal with the Mutalist quite well. He's only got four of them so far, but he has to use them as best he can to try and stop the Mutas from getting too much damage done. Right now it's a little bit jockeying for position, but the Mutas definitely are disadvantaged compared to the Phoenixes. He has to try and catch them out by moving towards them to get in range. In the meantime, Serral has a couple of Lings and Ravi just chilling out in the middle of the map. They're not really doing too much yet, though. The creep spread is still pretty good. Still being reasonably diligent on the left. Like to see some more spread on the right-hand side here. But uh, Serral's basically covered nearly half the map now. And we have the fourth base coming down for Goku Banda. The Templar Archives is coming down simultaneously. Oops, let's try and click on the correct thing. There it is. And uh, he will be moving up into a Storm Tech. So uh, starting to look at Immortals, starting to look at Archons. Serral, in the meantime, is getting his Lurker Den and uh, 12 Hydras as well. So we're going to see a very similar composition to the rather protracted game number one. Infestation Pit also over halfway done now for our My Insanity Zerg. And where, well, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look. Bear in mind that uh, as far as Hive Tech goes, we didn't see any Ultralisks or Broodlords uh, early on in this series as well, despite how long the game went. So um, that's always going to be worth noting. Hydralisks now are out en masse and there is no way these phoenixes are going to be able to contest those. Maybe he just leaves them as hydras and doesn't turn them into lurkers unless absolutely necessary. These mutas are doing a good job of killing off a lot. Now he knows that the Templar Archives is chrono boosting a psionic storm at the moment so I wonder if this means it's a good opportunity for hydras to do a lot of damage. If there's no storm on the field these hydras are going to get so much DPS done. Uh, I feel like this could end up being a timing for Serral here and he is actually lining something up against the fourth base. Ooh, well, those are phoenixes. I don't see any mutas left on the field. Are they all dead? Oh, wow, every muta's dead. But look at the amount of DPS with these hydras. Now, guys, this is pre-storm. Storm's only halfway done. So this could be a massive, massive opportunity uh, for Serral here. Kung Fu Pan has to hold on the best he can. One of those pylons has gone down. Oh, wow, both of them are going down, and the fourth base actually gets abandoned here. Great timing. Serral spotted the researching of Psionic Storm and went, actually, before that happens, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And that was really, really successful. So this fourth base is basically going down. We now think about what we want to do at the third. 
Now, if we we have storms now, so uh, this potentially could be disastrous for Hydras, and I therefore think Serral needs to move on back. Um, but he did basically get the fourth base for free, and that was really good. We have the fifth base up now here as well. Uh, these Phoenixes just kind of chilling out. They did a good amount of damage. There are now two Spore Crawlers at the fourth. You might as well start uh, doubling up. It pays, because over time, of course, you're going to have to uh, use an awful lot of resources to remake those drones. Poor Spore Crawler. All right, just about managing to get away in time. And now we have a couple more Lurkers in the composition. Of course, it's always very, very tricky. Hydras are very squishy, so they're really susceptible to storm. And Lurkers here. Well, he's thinking about moving forward. He's not 100% sure yet. What's Kung Fu Banda going to do, though? He's at 180 supply. Serral's maxed out. The army supplies are quite similar. But Serral kind of needs to get Kung Fu Banda to attack into him if he wants to maximize his effectiveness. In order for him to do that, he needs to get a position like here. He needs to be in position to force Kung Fu Banda to really, uh, really pick the engagement. And Kung Fu Banda at the moment doesn't know the army's moving back up here, but he will see it now. And that's actually going to give Serral a huge opportunity because his lurkers can now burrow inside a base. And that means that uh, this forces Kung Fu Banda to take a ridiculously bad engagement. Oh, and the attack upgrade goes down as well. This could be pivotal to this game, just that army positioning, managing to swing around the side of the third base. And now, Serral can attack the, th uh, the natural and wait for the army to attack into the lurkers. That's going to be so painful. Great storm to start things off with. Holy wow. I mean, he almost killed about 12 hydras there. Really nice. And uh, trying to tempt more units into the lurkers. Those hydras are toast. And are there a small number of units going into the natural? There are. It's really difficult because Kung Fu Banda doesn't want to walk into the path of this lurkers. So we're separating the army in half right now. These lurkers, okay, now we're getting really aggressive. We're stutter stepping them forward, actually. Good storms on top of the lurkers as well. And actually, this double pylon overcharge could end up making it very difficult indeed. There's an observer with this army, um, but there are only two immortals left. These lurkers will kill off these pylons. And as a result, the third base as well goes down. There's a counterattack here, but Hydralisk, Queens, and Mutas will be able to clean it up. It looks like Serral here should be able to take a decisive advantage going into game number four. Unfortunately, these Phoenixes' days are numbered. And while the fourth base is up and mining again, so much of the tech and the upgrades went down there that it's going to be very difficult to recover. It's 166 supply versus 90 right now. And uh, Serral is looking to regroup his army and come in for a massive blow. We have Mutas, we have Lurkers, and we have Hydralisks. Ah, oh, wait for me, says the Ravager. So uh, this, I mean, this I think is the killing blow. Economically, this can't be stopped. Uh, and, and I don't know where, uh, where Gung Fu Banda's income is coming from after this. The base is being abandoned by the pros, but they still need somewhere to go, and that's really the problem. All the buildings get absolutely destroyed here. The Lurkers have done their job, the Mutalisks have done their job, the Hydralisks have been superb, and despite storms being so, so good for Gung Fu Banda, there aren't enough of them to overwhelm an army of this size. 171, 109 supply, and Gung Fu Banda is pegged back on two bases. On two bases at the 14 minute mark. They're both mined out, ladies and gents. Oh no, that's a lie. They're almost both mined out. He needs to take an engagement and win it decisively. I don't know how he's going to do that right now. There's even an overseer for the Dark Templars. I mean, that just makes things so tricky and so difficult. I like how he's keeping away from the edge, not allowing the Phoenixes to get any pot shots off. And he's just, he's just sitting back saying, look, I can max out while you're stuck on two bases. And you'd be absolutely right. Serral is just going to... Uh, focus on killing off any counter-attack at this point. Here come the Phoenixes into the bottom right base, but that won't be enough. Phoenixes, Lurkers, Hydras. The Phoenixes are going to get pushed back, no doubt about it. And we're going to see Serral push back up this avenue here. 
and he basically has creep all the way to the third base location. So he should be able to pressure Kung Fu Panda into falling back here. The Phoenixes are doing a great job, but they are a distraction, admittedly. Here come the Phoenixes trying to box him in. Successfully kills one. Successfully kills two. Oh, so close. Oh, no, never mind. There we go. A couple of Hydras. We'll pick two more of them off, and I think... That is going to be, oh, what a beautiful queue there with the Swarm Crawlers. That is going to be the queue for Serral to push in. 188 supply versus 116. Yes, there are Psionic Storms available, but there's also an awful lot of DPS in this army. Trying to pre-spread. Uh, dodging about half of that storm with the Hydralisk, which is okay to start off with. Goading the Phoenixes into the Spore Crawlers. The Mothership Core almost going down as well. Gung Fu Banda, unfortunately, in a very weak position. These Lurkers have done a lot of damage to begin with. He can start sort of putting them here, here, and here. No more energy for Storms on those High Templars. He's now turning that into an Archon up the top of the ramp. That gets abducted and instantly killed off. And this is such a difficult position to be in. Great dodge as well of the storm. Another Archon gets abducted. And this army is slowly but surely getting wiped out. So Gung Fu Banner has to go ahead and engage. But the Lurkers are now doing so much damage. These Archons are huge beefy units. But they're not enough to withstand this barrage of DPS. Serral goes 2-1 up in this best of five. And is now one win away from the Intel Extreme Masters.